everyone on board the topic uh, which i want to discuss today is actually a uh, like uh, a case which i encountered a day ago and just this just triggered me to discuss uh, uh, this topic uh, so as uh, as the scenario i just mentioned that uh, there is a thyroid swelling which is extending esophagus and um, neck vasculature as well as uh, like uh, local in, uh, infiltration so what do you think uh, will be the challenges for you not only with reference to the air with reference to the overall management of this case so any words please any words from any one of you and dr rizwan aslam anyone wants to speak out please because we before we proceed Hello, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum <coughs> salam. Uh, so do we have a CT scan of the patient? Okay. Uh, just a second. I, actually, you, you are right in asking directly uh, the investigation, but that's what I have given you a hint that there is a patient in which uh, there is uh, involvement of esophagus just a second okay my is my screen screen visible yes it's visible you can see okay so i, I have given you a data that uh, there is a patient with thyroid ca or uh, like uh, so, uh, not uh, like uh, thyroid swelling th thyroid mass which is extending to the local structures as well as esophagus, <clears throat> trachea, and also to vascular, vascular structure as well as retrosternal. Okay? Yes, so it's okay. It doesn't like uh, your, your, your answer um like it's okay fine TV scan it will be there but i'm asking that what what do you think what will be the challenges during this case you would already have this information so what do you think what will be the problems in this case mm -hmm. like difficult be a difficult integration difficult yes. airway difficult mass yes. ventilation as well as intubation Okay. What else? Sir, he would not be comfortable while uh, supine in supine position also. So, okay. Look. Dyspnea while lying flat. Yes. What else? And so because, uh, sir, because uh, this patient has also uh, infiltration in the surrounding tissues like esophagus as you told us so uh, he may have dysphagia which is uh, due to that he may have malnutrition also malnutrition malnutrition so uh, like anemia definitely negative so compression nutrition. symptoms negative nutrition Mexico. nitrogen balance Balance. Okay, what else? Sir, compression uh, sir, symptoms. You are none Mass of you is understanding my question. But I'm asking no, but nobody is able to answer my question. I'm asking you now. You this this is I'm going one level advanced. Now you are anesthetizing this patient, Kamran. So just try to understand what question I'm asking you. Kindly repeat the question. Okay. <clears throat> Just 
we have a patient with thyroid CA or thyroid mass, which is involving local structures like esophagus, trachea, vascular structures, and also retrosternal extension. Okay. Now you have to anesthetize this patient. So what will be the challenges which you will have? So the things which are uh, being uh, uh, like uh, pointed out are difficult uh, mask ventilation, difficult intubation, and now like this neon lying flag, there is malnutrition because of involvement of esophagus, they get maybe dysphagia, the patient is not taking anything, the patient may be anemic, negative nitrogen balance, what else? Displaced trachea. Sir, hypovolemia due to bleeding uh, because Hy of the involvement of the uh, of the vascular structures. Hypovolemia because of sudden bleeding. What else? Okay, I'm so displaced from induction now. That at induction, like how I, I will induce this patient because he has a mass. Uh, effect. So uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll have difficulty intubating. Okay. Okay. So uh, we, of course, you know, we are, we are chalking it out. So one of the point we have already, have, we will, yeah. we will go to each, each point one by one. So one point is difficult mask ventilation. Other point is difficult intubation. So what else? There may be sudden bleeding. These are two points which are valid. What else? Anemia is one. Okay, pre-operatively, pre there may be anemia. What else? Sir, anemia. compression symptom. Compression, Dr. mass. Homera, you are repeating the things which I have already, we have mentioned. Now we are anesthetizing. Sir, displaced trachea. Displaced. This is un, uh, this, uh, anything new. Anything which is not being meant. You are repeating the same point again and again. Yes, Dr. Kamran. Dr. MH. I'm thinking. Okay. Sir, Is this, this a patient may also uh, this patient may also have symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism. But, but most probably hyperthyroidism be only so very good very good like hyper or hypothyroidism is a challenge okay so you are missing one thing this is a, a suspected uh, uh, thyroid cancer so concerns related to cancer these are some of the concerns which in specifically in this patient maybe this patient have radiotherapy or chemotherapy okay chemotherapy this may maybe this patient has severe pain, so opioid dependence. Okay. Also difficult IV access. Difficult IV access. What else? Okay, so like you you just think that this is uh, one level advanced, but but we we said that compression is one of them. Okay esophageal compression. So maybe this patient already had gastrostomy tube or feeding jejunostomy. Okay. Or if the airway is so much distorted, they may have preoperative gastrostomy under local anesthesia. So that will actually make your life much easy. Okay. And if, for example, patient had taken some chemotherapy preoperatively, so chemotherapy therapy effects like on bone marrow, on heart, okay, liver, kidneys. So you have to, of not, not of course, not every patient will be alike. But there may be things like that. Okay. So, Sir, like if they... arrhythmias, hypercar, hypercapnia, any anaphylaxis. Please, Dr. Homera, you are talking irrelevant. Try to be irrelevant. Okay. What about vocal cord involvement? 
कंसल्टेशन में है विस्ट्राइडर और वॉइस चेंजेस जो है वो लाइक बिकॉज ऑफ होर्सनेस ऑस स्ट्राइडर बिकॉज ऑफ और रिकरेंटली रेंजल नर्व इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन्वॉल्वमेंट okay so like surrounding structures may be any intraoperatively if there will be there will be bleeding you and 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 maybe preoperatively nobody you are not mentioning the the word of superior vena cava <laughs> obstruction syndrome okay and of dr humaira you are talking anaphylaxis can be occurring in any patient so how it is related to the discussion which we are doing sir i mean uh, any um, unusual unexpected side effect of drugs like mm. um, uh, he may have okay. uh, she may have hypotension or uh, cardiac blockade okay heart okay. blocks like that okay fistula formation between the structures very good this is there may be development of fistulas so you can expect anything of course with the help of thorough preoperative assessment specifically with radiological so now uh, what investigation would you like to do like ct mri nasal endoscopy specific sorry, sorry x ray what else thyroid scan for blood blood works will be there blood blood works will be there with reference to like cbc thyroid function tests lfts rfts this will all be there okay but uh, like specifically with reference to in this in this case actually more important things are radiological okay so, so now spray with thoracic inlet views जमेंट so what what should be the airway management plan so we should give all the drugs very slowly first of all and um mm, we should go for obviously okay but first airway you will give all all medications yes very slowly because they are susceptible to profound hypotension no No, 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 no! You are dis distracted. Would you like to go go for uh, rapid sequence induction or modified rapid sequence induction? Yes. Or normal normal induction. Or awake fiber optic. Modified. Sir, awake fiber optic. Awake fiber optic. Sir, okay. on the sir, yes. So, so actually, uh, awake fiber optic should be in your mind, okay. And um, what about inhalational induction with check laryngoscopy? and then proceed so, uh, yes yes we can do this okay so with reference to awake uh, awake fiber optic what will you what will be the first step you need to counsel the patient okay you need to counsel the patient about the need and requirement of course you will have the information that for example if the if it is involvement the trachea with the tracheal deviation and having the uh, like uh, involvement of vocal cords 
most probably the either the patient will end up in having tracheostomy or maybe patient if you are not able to handle the airway you are not able to intubate ventilate then emergency tracheostomy with reference to this thing so you will consult the patient about all the happenings okay and, and exam point of view you uh, you should not never take a chance and you should say awake fiber optic but actually the the thing which i did was a little bit different of course the practical conduct of anesthesia sometimes is different than the exam so exam in the exam you okay. should never say if you give medication doctor mh you will have another uh, fee submission Dev straight away okay if you straight away said i will give the medication slowly you will straight away fail in the exam in this patient okay so in this patient you can never say because maybe you will not be able to have the mask ventilation. If you give muscle intubation is far away, you will end up in a disaster because patient will can have, uh, uh, you will not be able to ventilate the patient. Intubation is No, no, I, I, skipped, I skipped the whole airway in my head somehow and then I was on drugs No problem, already. no problem. No problem. We are discussing for the same very good reason. Because in the the, yes. these scenarios, you will never find in the books. You will never understand yeah. The gravity of the topic, if, if you try to uh, uh, study from the holy, holy textbook of Morgan, Manus Morgan Sharif. If you try to read these things from there, you, you, you will have the same answer. Anyways, so you will consult the patient. So practically, because you will find a uh, superior laryngeal nerve block and recurrent laryngeal nerve block and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, but practically, you need to gargle, okay, or nebulize the patient with lidocaine. Okay, uh, you will thoroughly uh, have the gargles, either 4% or 10% with the safe dose of around 9 milligram per kg. Okay, with, the, with this one, either 40 or 100 milligram per ml in 4 or 10%. And in each, usually 1 ml is equal to 10 puff. It will be different in different different manufacturers, but usually it will be 10 puff will be equal to 1 ml. So each puff of this one will be 4 milligram or and this puff will be 10 milligram. So you should be knowing these calculations practically as well as uh, in the exam as well. So it will be around 7 to 9 milligram. It, you can say up to 9 milligram, but usually because it's the, they are gargling and you are advising the patient to spit it out. Just keep and count one, two, three, four, five, keep it as much as possible in the mouth, uh, in the throat and gargle it out. It, it is very difficult to explain the patient, but anyways, I did in the, the same way, okay? So after this thing, maybe if you are planning for uh, nasal, you will need to anesthetize the nasal area as well with the, in the, uh, theoretically, plagiarists with cocaine or, uh, or uh, the Nebulization with uh, lidocaine will serve the, the same purpose, okay? So, uh, you should be doing the nasal and oropharyngeal and uh, like uh, gargling, thorough gargling, okay? And then if now you know what things you need, okay? And this is this scenario which with reference to airway management, you need not only the awake fiber optic stuff, awake fiber optic, uh, like, uh, sorry, fiber optic, you need rigid bronchoscope, awake uh, fiber optic bronchoscope, okay, and rigid bronchoscope. Do you think, can you, can someone tell me what, what is the reason for rigid bronchoscope? Anyone, please. What will be the use of rigid bronchoscope? If airway collapse, you will have no other. You will have no option if the airway collapse uh, to ventilate the patient with the rigid bronchoscope. Okay, maybe even the endotracheal tube can create problem. Even if you have passed endotracheal tube and then you give the, the anesthesia, maybe the there may be a need for rigid bronchoscope. 
so remember this thing and rigid bronchoscope we should be will be needed even at the time of extubation so rigid bronchoscope you should be needing and all the bujis hoga hoga karte you will be needing the bujis you will need the supraglottic airway devices but will supraglottic airway device be effective in this in this case in case you are not able to ventilate will supraglottic airway device can help you out no sir no sir yes okay so actually you will not be able to uh, you will not be able to ventilate even with supraglottic airway device okay then but you you have to have all these things tracheostomy tracheostomy for appropriate for that patient should be there okay uh, different sizes of bujis different size of endotracheal tube would you like to have endotracheal tube of five size yes uh, of adult, course yes, why, uh, will the normal endotracheal tube of five size will be okay like the pediatric the normal one which we are using in pediatric will that tube or some different <laughs> different sort of five number tube there is a tube which is called as micro laryngeal tube micro laryngeal okay because usually the the, the normal five tube will be not more than 20 cm i think if i am not wrong okay but so that tube will finish in the mouth if you are able to power pass it you will not be able to use it so you need the micro laryngeal tube which is of the the, the length of around 25 to 27 cm like normal and with the lumen of 5 5 mm you know can you mute your mic it is a big distraction only the person who is speaking out has requested to unmute okay so micro laryngeal tubes you need and of course uh, this one uh, nas nasal nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal airway okay then like uh, video laryngoscope oblique cmac oblique light scope okay then what else you should be needing actually this is not only for this patient this is sort of you can say the difficult uh, airway management trolley or whatever you say trico trico therapy it okay so actually so so what i did in this patient there was in there was a tracheal deviation okay and uh, of course i i was prepared because uh, in our hospital now or even internationally we have and because fiber optic is very uh, uh, like uh, it is difficult to use by uh, if you are not having the good experience you might uh, uh, you will be able to damage the the uh, the fibers but now we we have a slightly different thing which, which is actually like fiber optic but is led it does not have the 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 same fibers it is led even if it is a little bent nothing will nothing will happen so led uh, fiber optic this uh, bronchoscope uh, is is flexible led flexible bronchoscope is is uh, much easier to use as compared to bronchoscopy of course if you are if you, this is with reference to um, like intubation it is not with reference to the bronco the, the the diagnostic or therapeutic bronchoscopies which is being done for the, man, the for the treatment because uh, it will it is only have limited uh, movement and it is for intubation okay so what for us it is much easier to use if it is available uh, uh, so uh, that is one thing so actually my plan was that to anesthetize that this anesthetize the topic lies the uh, the airway and after that i was prepared for awake fiber optic but actually what i wanted to do was just a sort of inhalational sort of induction with the patient in sitting position i only gave a little bit of glycopyrrolate and i gave 1 mg of midazolam because of course there was patient did not have uh, that uh, like uh, grave symptoms so i i know that uh, i will be able to handle the situation 
So I just made it him and I just opened the, the sevoflurane and rather the patient was not, not uh, totally sleep. I just was able to open because the, again, I say that top, the airway was top, like, topicalized and I had a resident with me which was who was doing it. So we had uh, uh, this uh, laryngoscope, this one, uh, C-Mac, okay? So we visualized the trachea was a little uh, deviated, but we, will, we were able to visualize the, the, the trachea and we passed a bougie. And uh, as soon as we managed to pass the bougie, uh, like, uh, and then I asked him to railroad, railroad the tube. And as soon as we reached near the glottis, uh, not near the like uh, uh, epiglottis, I gave propofol and we managed to intubate the patient because what has happened that uh, that patient, you know, even in that part of the world, uh, sometimes patients are not being seen properly, evaluated properly by the surgeons. And you will be surprised that just before actually when the patient was already in the OR and I, I had the same plan of arterial line, I will tell you the rest of the things which you can uh, expect and what I was expecting if that surgery were proceeded, but because uh, it was sort of irresectable tumor, okay? But they only come to know in the in the morning when they see the MRI report, which were they were supposed to see before, but they did not see the report in time. And they only came to know when the patient was already in the OR. So they changed the plan and their plan was only to do the tracheostomy and take the biopsy. So that they did not proceed with the surgery. I will tell you if they had proceeded with the surgery, what would be the thing? But that's how I, I did it. But uh, the rest of the things will be the same for you people. But only difference will be that instead of this check laryngoscopy and visualization, you will go for awake fiber optic after, after uh, anesthetizing the airway. You will just put a, a mouth gag. Okay, mouth gag, which is... Uh, Bite block, you can, some people say mouth gag, but some people will say bite block. So you will just put a bite block to prevent the patient from biting the, the, the scope. And either you will, you will go from the nasal, nasal passage or you will go first from the uh, oral passage and you will try to visualize the, uh, the, the, the glottis and you will pass the scope through it. And then you will go. I did it as in, uh, we did it in a slightly uh, different way, but that is the way you can handle this situation. Okay, because if you know that you are the patient is spontaneous, and because you cannot ventilate this patient, I was I like uh, my planning was in a way that I will not ventilate the patient at all. I, I either I will uh, be succeeded in this thing or because the, I had given nothing, I had given nothing. Now we will be discussing the other uh, other aspects because. If you are trying to put the, the patient in this stress without giving stress response, blunting of stress response, patient can have severe cardiovascular implication, okay? But what I was doing, I was using dexmedetomidine, okay? So if I ask any one of you, what will be the difference between dexmedetomidine versus, for example, for instance, fentanyl, what will be the difference? Or like, have you got any idea why I prefer dexmedetomidine instead of fentanyl? I had already used a small dose of midazolam. What will be the advantage of dexmedetomidine? Does not yes. cause respiratory depression. Very good. Very good. Okay. What else? Anything else? So fentanyl will be, and it is actually. Patient is advisable oh. immediately with dexmedetomidine. I'm sorry? Patient is advisable immediately with dexmedetomidine. Yes, actually, dexmedetomidine's effect is much more brisk and much more effective than fentanyl. So, like, I had more trust on dexmedetomidine rather than fentanyl. Okay? So, I was using it on a very dose because, again, I'm telling you that this is totally non-technical to use in the way I, I use. But you, uh, ideally, you should be using it with the syringe pump with a dose of around 0 0.5, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 milligram, microgram, sorry, microgram per kg per hour. Okay. But practically, practically, at least if you don't want to use it in the, the syringe pump, again, I say this is not technical. 
This is not technical. It is only basis of experience. And uh, remember one thing, dexmedetomate is, uh, is among the medication. If you don't use it tactfully and you don't know what is the next step, you will be in big, you can be in big, 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 big trouble because there are incidents, the people who are using it practically without uh, proper uh, anticipations of the things which can occur, you can cause disaster because dexmedetomidine, some people are using the the this uh, loading dose and then they are put uh, only using the, the the rates which are written in the books because the patient response will be totally different in different patients different response come but i do i just take the 10 to 10 or 20 microgram and i put it in a separate medicated line ringer lactate or normal saline okay and i just titrate the the rate the, the rate of this fluid according to the response I again say, don't quote myself. This is again, only I'm sharing my personal experience. Uh, and this is only with the sense which I've told you. And you all, you should have glycopyrrolate in your hand, atropine in your hand. In case patient, and of course, ephedrine or uh, like, uh, uh, like anything for the blood pressure, because it can cause even with the smallest of the dose, it can, can have severe response. So whenever you are using, but but in my experience, whatever experience I have, it, this, this is very effective way. As soon, for example, if you the patient's heart rate is 100, you will just titrate the, uh, the, the rate of this, this uh, uh, fluid according to the heart rate. And as soon as it is coming down up to, even I, I decrease the rate if it is coming down to 80. Because I know that when I will stop, even then, it will from 80 to 70. So my experience is that if the heart rate is 100 and I stay, start it with the fast rate, I can titrate it. Okay. So that's what I did. That's what I do. Okay. So dexmedetomidine. <clears throat> but ideally, you should, you should have infusion pump to use it. But practically, sometimes it becomes difficult uh, in the scenario to use it. Uh, of course, you have to label this, uh, the, uh, the fluid. And you have to use a dedicated line because you can you cannot have that one only this line is there, and you're using it solely, solely, solely. No, it's not the way. Okay, so because dexmedetomidine response is predictable, more predictable, more effective than fentanyl. So I prefer to use and actually combination of fentanyl and midazolam can cause synergistic effect. So the one plus one will be three. So the the, the like depressant effect with reference to uh, like respiratory depression will be much more if you are using midazolam and fentanyl, okay? Rather than midazolam alone or fentanyl alone. The combination of benzodiazepine with opioids have synergistic effect, okay? So that is, uh, that is the reason. Or uh, if you are only worried about the cardiovascular effect, you can have esmolol, okay? Uh, because you are using topical if you still you have limitation, if you, if you still you have the limit, you can use lidocaine as well around one, one milligram per kg, okay? So in this scenario, especially even if you are doing awake fiber optic, still you have to handle the stress response, okay? Because even, yes, you said the patient, you have to do awake fiber optic, this, 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 but even as much you have practically, because they say you have, you can have uh, this transtracheal block and you will do this uh, spray as you go. It, it looks very nice when you are only telling in the exam. But practically, it is very difficult to do. Practically, the patient will, will have very severe uh, uh, like uh, hemodynamic response when, when you are doing awake fiber optic. So you have to be prepared for these things. Okay? Because uh, the dexmedetomidine alone, if you are using, it will not cause that much severe sedation, especially if you are using in a very low dose. So these are the things. What else? What else will be will be the problems in that? Like like if you are not, if I I was actually uh, able to handle the 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 patient in a very simple way, but uh, actually we were pre we were prepared for everything. We have, we we were prepared for any uh, adverse problem. We because in this scenario you may have. Uh, the the problem which are there in uh, superior vena cable syndrome okay so there may be obstruction of the venous return okay by the compression and pa patient can have cardiovascular effects as well in addition you are not able to ventilate so in that scenario rigid bronchoscope can help you okay 
rigid bronchoscope can help you and tilting the patient to the side can help you okay or there is another maneuver which is called as um, reverse salic maneuver which can in, in which you will lift the the swelling but of course if it is more with the retrosternal extension maybe it will not help but yes these are two three things which you which which we, we, you can use to handle the situation so a safe anesthesia plan that you don't reach up to the level in which you need these things even you know tracheostomy tracheostomy sometime if it is too big a swelling you will not be able to do the tracheostomy even okay so these are that's why you, in the exam you will never say that practically of course there will be some window of hope somewhere so maybe you will be able to do it but practically it's very difficult okay and if you have any doubt you will have arterial line in place before even before anesthetizing before doing anything you should have arterial line because any hemodynamic instability can occur and you should have this monitoring before you start so arterial line will be there and then of course during the conduct because um, uh, my uh, like uh, in this discussion my main focus was on how to handle the situation of course this patient can bleed like anything so all the gadgets which you use for uh, massive bleeding patient like <laughs> Rapid infuser, okay, fluid warmer, blood and blood products, okay, use of uh, uh, <clears throat> this one, uh, what is what for uh, cell saver, okay, use of rotum or pombrolastography. Okay, and like these are the common things: wide bore, wide bore cannulas, or like a CVP or vascular sheet. Not vascular sheet. This uh, like which we use for pulmonary artery catheter. Okay, so like this, this can help you. And another thing, because when they are in the neck area, they are dissecting that area, there may be uh, hemodynamic response with reference to vagal or tachycardia. Both of them can occur. Usually vagal response with bradycardia. So you have to be, to be ready for those things as well. Okay. And uh, the rest of the things are common uh, like in any other, like, like in any other patient. So of course, if with reference to thyroid crisis or thyroid uh, function it may may have uh, the incidence of this thyroid crisis okay and uh, with reference to uh, like uh, this one uh, uh, vocal cord involvement there may be post operative hoarseness or strider or airway obstruction or another thing with long standing tracheomalacia Okay, so in any case, this will be a long, long surgery. Maybe they, they may ending up tracheostomy postoperatively after removal of the mass. If they had proceeded, I was mentally prepared for around 10 to 15 hour surgery with all the things in my hand. And um, that's it. Okay, so I, I hope you understand what I was trying to, to highlight with reference to uh, like uh, management overall or as well as the, the challenges which you will have and actually this is a learning uh, uh, like even whenever even if you if you are studying this topic you should be like if now practically you will be studying about what are the difficult airway predictors uh, predictors for difficult mass ventilation predictors of for difficult uh, laryngoscopy and intubation and then what will be the algorithm for uh, difficult uh, airway management like uh, what will you do if you face unanticipated, this is anticipated difficult intubation, but you you should be knowing what are the anticipation if you faced unanticipated uh, difficult intubation, what will you do? What you should be doing in anticipated difficult airway with reference to pregnancy, okay? Will you proceed or will you 
uh, awaken the patient. This will be this discussion. Then what will be the role of supraglottic airway devices? With the supraglottic airway devices, would you proceed or would you use uh, intubating LMA to try to, to have a try for intubation? Or if there is no emergency, you will awaken the patient with reference to pregnant patient, there, uh, you whether if there is fetal bradycardia or fetal, sorry fetal distress or no the fetal there is no fetal distress you will try to awaken the patient if the, the like you will have these challenges you should be knowing how to do awake fiber optic what are the how to do the analgesia sorry anesthesia individual nerve blocks above the level of vocal cord what nerve supply below the level of vocal cord what nerve supply how to do the individual nerve blocks uh, what is the practical conduct spray as you go lidocaine nerve supply of the whole a like area like not, not only the oropharynx and nasopharynx the air uh, uh, nasal cavity you should be knowing what are the nerves which are involved in the the, the uh, uh, nerve supply of the nasal cavity and then rest of the things like uh, different types of uh, 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 airway gadgets, which I told you, what is CMAC, what is glidoscope, what is the difference between CMAC and glidoscope, and what advantage is another MACI with a what with a beak you can move it with if in case you the epiglottis is overhanging and you need to just lift it, and uh, role of bougies, what will be the challenges related to stillet and related to reinforced tubes, uh, even after intubation you can have compression. So how to deal with it? If they are going for uh, like a sort of thoracotomy, maybe you need double lumen tube. Maybe they will proceed after uh, uh, like intubation. Maybe they are doing a tricostomy. Yes, very important thing, which I forgot to tell you that uh, usually when you do tricostomy in a tricostomy uh, a patient, there will be two, three scenarios. There will be a patient who is undergoing tricostomy under local anesthesia. This is one scenario. You will have a patient in which tracheostomy will be done. Uh, will be done as an emergency. That will be another scenario. There will be a patient in which you are doing cricotherapy and you are posing it percutaneous, like a needle uh, tracheostomy. Okay, uh, and there will be a scenario in which you are doing a patient with intubation, and later on in, in during the surgery they are doing the tracheostomy. So in that way, in that thing, in you know, modern anesthesia. If you have the availability of glidoscope, what you should do that when they are uh, <clears throat> they are creating the stoma and as soon as they are able to create the stoma, first of all, what you should do, you should pre-oxygenate. I'm using again the word pre-oxygenate, but actually it's uh, you, you will give proper oxygenation at that time. Even if they have made the stoma, you will ask them to, to put a gauze to fill that gap. You will give a good uh, number of breaths. To, to make the uh, oxygen reserve in case you face any problem during the passage of the uh, like uh, the, uh, the tracheostomy tube, then what you should do, you should put the glidoscope, you should visualize the, the, the area, you should visualize the cords, and you should gradually pull the tube uh, above the level when they, where they are putting the, uh, they, where they are, are putting the, the tracheostomy. And as soon as they, they proceed with it, you can give the circuit to them and keep the gliderscope over there so that the things are under your vision. Because sometimes what happens that they are not able to, you have pulled out the tube and now they are not able to put the tracheostomy tube. So that can be a big disaster. Or uh, uh, there may be a development of false patch passage that you are not able to <clears throat> ventilate through that tracheostomy tube. So if you have put a glidoscope or even laryngoscope, you, if you don't have glidoscope in, in, in that scenario, you can have even the laryngoscope, but think, keep the things in your vision. Okay. Or, or there is like, there are so many things which you can do according to the scenario, which you had and according to the difficulty of intubation, you can, you can have bougie ready with you or tube exchanger ready with you. So that in case you need to push the tube again, you can place the bougie inside. So that uh, if, you, if there is any problem, you can push the tube again to the place so that you don't lose the ventilation. Because otherwise, maybe patient, you will not be able to ventilate, you will, you will lose the patient. So this is a correct way. If, you, if it is possible for you, you should do the tracheostomy in that way, that you are visualizing the things. If you, are, you pull the tube, 
and you are not able, not able to pass that tracheostomy what will you do? You can only pray and because the patient will, will go with direct flight, not uh, transit flight. Patient will have a direct flight to heavens. Okay? So, I hope uh, this was a fruitful session. I have told you the academic things. You can open the book and you can read the... I, I will share the link. I opened some of the documents. Uh, I will just show you. There are some case reports related to um, uh, like retro tunnel, uh, this uh, case of uh, superior vena cava syndrome due to interior mediastinal mass, and of course the 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 things which you need for uh, awake fiber optic and uh, difficult airway algorithms, the special scenarios predicting difficult airway. What are the difficult pre predictors of difficult airway? These are theoretical thing. Actually, I have conducted sessions in detail multiple times. You can review them, okay? And uh, radiological studies and what else? Yes, it is also, you will find here stress response. How to blunt stress response to uh, laryngoscopy, okay? This, uh, this link have a lot of information, a lot of material which can help you out. But for that, you should, you should have the courage to to say no to the, the tunnel vision of the, the holy book of anesthesia, holy textbook of anesthesia, which majority of people worship. So if I say that Morgan, uh, people are very like, they don't accept it and they don't want to listen anything against their holy book. Okay, but if you want to learn, you should be learning in that way. Yes, Jennifer Rose, it's really nice to, to have you after so many days, okay? And uh, spread the message. Spread the message. Learn in that way. And Dr. Humera, my my dear my dearest friend, because Dr. Humera always uh, have the courage to have wrong questions or wrong answers. And still, no, don't fear. She She's not, never afraid to to have even wrong answer. So I, I really appreciate the spirit of Dr. Umar. Yes, Kamran, now you understand? Your answer was yes, starting, yes. we started the discussion in, in which Dr. Kamran asked for CT scan. Okay? Yes, sir. I do. Now the I final, get the full view. Now you get the full view. Now open your yes, uh, open yes. your book and you will find all the answers. Okay? There was a... Yes, there was I will a give you with reference to, I, I uh, just, uh, I remember there is a source with reference to airway, uh, like um, airway management, I will share you again, in which I have put all the difficult, like uh, predictors for related with reference to difficult airway, uh, mask ventilation, difficult ventilation, uh, uh, laryngoscopy, and then different, uh, like, uh, which you should be knowing, Cormac and Lehan classification, you should be knowing this Malampati and uh, 332 and Lemon and Wilson's laws. These are theoretical things you will find in each, each and every book. And actually, in the if you go to this uh, uh, playlist, just where are the playlist? They have slightly changed the system. I don't know where it's playlist. Yes, these are playlist. So in the playlist, you will find a playlist with reference to airway. And in that, I had discussed airway topics in detail before. Let me see where is it. Yes, this is this is the one. So okay. airway okay. assessment, awake fiber optic. Uh, majority will be in English. Maybe some of them in Urdu. So pardon for me for passing. Okay. So Doctor M H. Where is Doctor M H? Yes. Yes, Dr. Bob, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So I hope you understand. And uh, rapid sequence induction, modified rapid sequence induction. What is the difference between rapid sequence induction versus mod modified rapid sequence induction? Uh, what is the role of priming? What is the role of, uh, like, uh, for modified rapid sequence induction? Usually, you should have sugar medex with reference to rocronium. And it is ex excellent way since last 11 years. You will be surprised. I have never used. And again, the holy saxamethonium. Because if you have a rosogamadex, 
and rocuronium, actually there is no indication in which you need to have succinamethonium. Okay, so this is again a practical thing. Of course, it's not a scenario in in everyone's uh, setup. You can you you need to give it, but actually. Uh, maybe after 10, 15 years, there will, uh, there will maybe development of some uh, other uh, brands of Sugamedex, which will be very cheap and it will be available everywhere. This is what, this is what I predict. And uh, that's it. Okay. So thank you very much for your presence. And thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. You know, if you want anyone who is wants to thanks to me, my request is to spread the message and try to 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 have a look on the the YouTube discussions. I'm not doing it for any financial purpose. So because I have I have to uh, uh, like uh, speak out loudly again and again. So you don't think that I am doing it for the sake of become billionaire through this uh, YouTube channel. This is just for you. And this is just to serve my speciality, which I love every day. Anesthesia is my darling. And I love anesthesia more than yesterday. So if you, if you want uh, to thanks me, please try to learn in the way which I am requesting you. Not, not blindly cramming a holy book of Manhus Morgan. Thank you very much.